Salam alaikum and welcome to another episode of Karbala Reflections. We are here today to discuss the commemoration of Ashura, its necessity, and why Muslims all around the world do it annually. Today, I'm here with Sister Maryam and Sister Ruya to discuss the benefits of active remembrance every year and to discuss the history of where the commemoration of Ashura took place and why we still continue it. Let's begin. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Um, I, I really wanted to learn about the history of Ashura. Is it something that we have developed over the years? Um, no, it's something that um, has been in history for centuries. Um, it's um, an event that took place over a thousand years ago, and we have um, hadiths um, pointing towards this particular event. Um, I'm sure Sister Maryam has a few hadiths that that do point towards yeah. um, this this particular event. Yeah. Well, uh, it started. The commemoration started um, right after the events happened, and it started with uh, Sayyid Zainab uh, remembering uh, the events and uh, crying and like putting majlises for it. Uh, even when she was still um, captured, actually, even when she was still a seer, she started doing that. And uh, over the years, we have a lot of hadith that Imam Zain al-Abidin, alayhi salam, he would have majlises and uh, he would uh, even cook, actually, and invite people to come and commemorate and sit and remember what happened and cry. And uh, people would gather and remember. And uh, during the time of every single imam, imam, after that, we have a lot of uh, hadith that saying they well, did it themselves. Well, I guess the question that would come up then is that, well, you're describing events that took place immediately after the, the events of Kabbalah, but is it still beneficial to us today, so many years on, to have an active remembrance so often every year? Do you think it is needed? What are, what are the benefits? Um, I believe it is. Um, I think that in this day and age, more than, um, more than ever, we need to commemorate these events. Um, as we see in every corner of the world, um, tyranny echoes out, um, whether it's in Afghanistan, Iraq, whether it's in Yemen. Um, and these events... Um, are slightly similar to what happened in Karbala, as in um, there is a number of specific people who are being um, tortured, who are being, um, who are governed by a, a tyrannical um, government. So I think um, definitely um, we need to commemorate these events. And um, these events that happened didn't happen to a, um, especially, um, the events that took place wasn't um, an event that that happened to a, an ordinary person. It was the grandson of the Holy Prophet. Um, he was a person that stood for truth. He was a person that stood for just, justice, forgiveness, um, every positive aspect um, that you can think of, he stood for. So um, a lot can be learned from um, the events of Karbala. So the points that you just discussed are very relevant to us as a Muslim community in this day and age. However, do you think there's any benefits that over that are not just about us? Are there more benefits in commemorating the events of Ashura to, to fellow humans that are not necessarily Muslim? Or, for example, to people who haven't heard about Imam Hussein, but just as a message itself? Um, I believe yes, because we have... Um a famous um, quote from Mahatma Gandhi, mm -hmm. who, um, I mean, he was a Hindu, um, yet he took lessons in um, the uprising of Imam Hussein um, to his own cause. And he said that if it wasn't, it was from the, um, the, the lessons of Imam Hussein that he persevered in, 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 in his own cause. Um, so we also have Charles Dickens, who's also um, uh, commented on the, um, 
on, on Imam Hussein himself, not necessarily on particularly on the points, but on his character. So um, yes, definitely. Um, um, I know that, for example, when we have the Ashura march here, we have non-Muslims, whether they're from the Jewish faith, whether they were, they're from the Catholic faith, or um, uh, an overall Christian faith, uh, even non-believers, um, atheists, um, join the walk. Um, because obviously over the years we, we, have, um, we have come to explain the events of um, Ashura and any, any person with any kind of heart will, um, will mourn what has happened in some way or other. So yes, um, these commemorations, um, non-Muslims do um, take points from it. I've seen that personally, only recently I was actually sitting with a group of friends and I must say that not all of them were Shia Muslims. And when we were discussing the events of Muharram as a, as a young generation, they, they, were, they are relatively young in age, they all had heard about Imam Hussein and what he stood for and had personal individual opinions as to its importance and its significance. And I think that Exactly like you said, over the years, alhamdulillah, the message has been so widely spread that we have been able to pass the message on to, to others, be it um, non-Muslims, be it the youth. And the benefit of that is that even if it doesn't end with the result of spreading Islam, it definitely passes on good qualities, which is like you said about Charles Dickens, the qualities that Imam Hussein possessed, the characteristics that he had, are things that we can all learn from. Yeah, I think overall, right and wrong is something universal, and it's something that comes from the human nature. We all love to do right, like we are born like that. It's in our fatra to like the right, al haq and we don't like the batil or the wrongdoing. So, and the story of Ashura and the story of Imam Hussein, it's that, it's black and white, it's right and wrong, it's haqq and batil. And whoever, like even as Sister Ruya said, even if, even if you're atheist, you don't believe in anything, but you're born with that fatra that you like the haqq and you don't like the batil. In many cases, even for the people who do the battle themselves, they like to hear stories about people who do good because that's our nature. It gives them hope, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's that's our nature. So I think the story, when you tell the story to like a big audience and non-Muslims and non-Shias, and they just like the fact that somebody took a stand for the right cause. And even during the whole, like, even if we're just discussing the day of Ashura, during that whole day and losing so many people of his own family, the young, the, the baby, the, the old, all of that, he never, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, never, never did something that is wrong. He didn't, like, say a bad thing. He didn't get, uh, like, he didn't do an, a wrong action. He, even during all of that, he stick to doing the right thing. And I think that's what really appeals to people when they want they hear it they just like that he was basically 100 uh, percent well, well of course he was an he was an infallible yeah. and alhamdulillah yeah. we've been very blessed in the in, in the religion of islam to be blessed with many role models so the thing is sister yeah that after many conversations with many people the question i get asked a lot is that it's been over a thousand years does it make sense as Muslims, to still be commemorating every single year? Absolutely. Um, we have, um, uh, let's take a simple so example of um, this country. In this country, we have um, every year people commemorating um, the, first, the First and Second World War. And they even have the day that this happens, they symbolize it by wearing a poppy. Mm -hmm. And they commemorate those um, soldiers who lost their lives um, during that war, protecting, um, protecting their country. So it's not something that's specifically um, that, that Muslims do. It's, it's, it's a universal thing that um, each um, society, each um, faith, creed, whether, they're, um, whether they have a faith or they don't have a faith, there is something in their lives that they do commemorate um, yearly, whether it's the passing of a loved one, they commemorate it, they, 
they um, talk about their good points, they talk about what a wonderful person they lost. Um, obviously, they um, commemorate or celebrate in different ways, but the, the, the point is the same. Yeah. So um, it's absolutely, um, it's, it's, it's not something that's um, old fashioned or something that should, should eventually stop. Um, it's something that I think should continue um, so that everyone is aware of um, the events of Karbala, not just the fact that the Prophet's family um, was so brutally slaughtered, literally slaughtered, um, but the, um, the message that he, um, that, that he brought with him. Yeah, that's a very good point, because I feel like another misconception there is within the community is that um, not just people from outside the community, but even amongst ourselves, people tend to sometimes think that we are commemorating a single day. Mm -hmm. We are commemorating the events of Ashura, that's what we call it. And they associate all of the majalis, all of the lectures with 10 days. Whereas in reality, we are not commemorating, a, we are not commemorating an event, an isolated event. We are commemorating a series of events, yes. a series of positive qualities within the Ahlul Bayt, negative qualities in other people that led to not one battle, not two, not three, but throughout the history of Islam, throughout the history of the Prophet and his holy household, that led to this event and that in many ways continued after the events of Ashura. So please touch on that a bit more. Um, I think one very, very good example is um, the recent events that took place in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. About three weeks ago, there was a bombing in um, a Shia mosque, and it killed over 50 people and injured um, a lot of um, others. Um, so this was um, on a Friday when they knew that the mosque would be full. For Friday prayers. For Friday prayers. Now, um, these individuals who lost um, loved ones, um, they didn't t take to the street to... Um, get revenge or see who's done it or um, try and um, uh, turn this negative thing um, into a worse situation. They went out and they demonstrated, they told the government that this, they are not going to stand for this. Um, at the funeral, they had very powerful speeches. Um, uh, in parliament, um, people rose, uh, um, rose against what what was happening because it was happening to a particular uh, type of people. Again, um, a few days ago when um, students were um, sitting their entry exam for university and it was an area where it was um, the students were of a particular sect and again this event happened and what the students did, those who did survive, the next day they actually went and they sat the exam again. So this is something that they learn, they have learned not to um, tolerate, not, not to tolerate um, these, the, the, and this is, this is maybe, um, an, uh, you know, these, these things are happening in Afghanistan, but not just in Afghanistan, it is happening all over the world. And I think that um, a lot of people are taking points on um, what um, Imam Hussein did. He, he wasn't just, um, fighting for his own rights absolutely not. or fighting for power position it was a wider thing that he was fighting for it was um, the fact that you should not let other people dictate what to believe who to believe how to live your life um, uh, and if you see with your bare eyes that the government um, itself is going against every single thing that you believe um, and it's 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 all negative. Um, then yes, um, he he took it upon himself to um, to stand against it, but also to make people of generations after him um, know how to deal with the situation. Personally, I feel that every Muharram has been different. Every Muharram has been a new learning experience for me because exactly like Sister Roya said. We are in a world where there is constant change and where there is constant negative things that we are surrounded by. 
three weeks ago. It could be the thing in Afghanistan that uh, that you just mentioned. It could be something happening in Yemen. It could be something happening in Iraq. And whereas, yes, the issues are all negative and they are clear human rights violations, the source is sometimes different and the mentality behind the negative action or the reasoning behind it could be different. And that is why the message of Ashura lives on with me year after year, because I feel that in any situation that arises, I could learn from Imam Hussein and his actions on that day. Be it trying to keep the peace, he, he demonstrated it. Being forgiving, he demonstrated it. Being standing for a cause, he demonstrated it. And I feel that if we try to look at the events of Ashura with a new lens and not with the lens of Ashura full stop, ten, the 10th tenth day of Muharram, of course, that should be remembered, and rightly so, for many other reasons. But as a learning point for us, I feel it's very important to look at the aspects, exactly how Sister Roya mentioned, as not as an isolated event, the series of events before it and after it, so that we could really understand the message of the Ahlul Bayt, and so we could really learn from it and implement it within our daily lives. Well, I really liked something that Sister Roya said now, which um, it just brought back uh, maybe memories. But um, the fact that she said when it happened three weeks ago in Afghanistan and people decided not to go on the streets and fight and kill others because it happened, or the students, they just decided to go and um, sit their exams the next day. I think a very important message of Ashura that they have really demonstrated very well that they have taken is that we should never forget that Imam Hussein didn't fight. Imam Hussein, until the last second before the war, he was asking them, you know what, I want to demonstrate peacefully. I want, I will never give in to a dictator or to something, to Batil or to Yazid, because he stood for every wrong thing in the world. So I will never give in. But I won't fight and kill to, like, I, I will go, and he was asking them to go aside, to give me any other path. I won't go to Kufa. I won't do this. Give, tell me. Tell me. I'll sit in the desert with my family alone. Let's stop this bloodshed. They didn't accept. And they started the fighting. So a very important message that we can take, really, for me at least, especially now that you, you said that story. It is like that. Uh, it is like Imam Hussein did exactly that. And that's the important message that you should never, ever give in. But on the other hand, you don't... What, not giving in doesn't mean fighting and killing. It means you take a stand and you like stand for what you believe in. Until in a human, and yes. if that means that you will get killed, okay then. That's the, I mean that's the sacrifice that you have to give that Imam Hussein did. Not himself only, even his baby, even his his family, everyone. But before that, we should always take a stand, and we should always do it peacefully. And I think. Every day we can learn from that. For, for stuff very simple, even at home, maybe something happens. Mm. I should learn how to do how to deal exactly the same way. And something it's and sometimes it's something much bigger, like in politics or countries mm. or continents. So is that uh, as, sorry? As Sister Maria mentioned, the point that a, a very simple thing mm. we do in our daily lives, we do learn from Imam Hussein. For example, my children, I always tell them that if you see someone being bullied. Mm. You should not just stand back and be scared and not say anything. If you see it with your own eyes, you have a duty to either, if you can interfere and try and stop it, then fine. But if not, then you go to a higher authority and you report it. You don't just stand there blindly and, um, and, and accept what is happening. Exactly. Because this is, to a small child, um, you can't go into detail, into depth about the events of mm. Ashura. But one thing you can say is that this is what Imam Hussein did. He mm. stood there, he saw something bad is happening, and he took a stand. Mm. But as, I, as Sister Mariam said, this is a very small point mm. for a child, but you implement that mm. uh, at, at an early stage that you shouldn't, um, even when you see something's happening, if you, it's, and it's nothing to do with you, but you see some other person being bullied, then you should, um, in one way or another, take a stand and protect that person from being bullied. Hmm. The examples you have both given have been great examples of how the message of Ashura is reflected and what you are learning from it on a daily basis, be it um, 
children in Afghanistan and sitting their exams, being how you raise your child and within the family. And I think that that really goes to show as to the importance of remembering the events of Muharram annually, because we do, we learn something new, we allow it, we learn from it in a way that it could, it could it's life altering, having such a, having such a role model. Personally, when I think about the events of Muharram and the actions of Imam Hussein and the need for remembrance. I relate it back to an ayah in the Quran. I'm sure you both know it in Arabic better than I do, but in um, the translation, roughly, would be that the um, say, when it was revealed to the Prophet, say that I do not ask for any compensation from you for anything other than the love of me and my family. Love in itself is a word, I believe, personally, that it's the actions that demonstrate pure love from a selfish love and a love that is beneficial to all. Obviously, 1,000 years have, over 1,000 years have passed and the love that we have for the Prophet and his holy family only benefits us between, between the two-way dynamic. They, they are not benefiting anything from our love. And so I see it as my Islamic obligation to love the Ahlul Bayt and his family, peace be upon them. But in many ways, I feel the commemoration of the events of Ashura are how I can express my love because loving someone means to allow their memory to live on. It means to learn from them. It means to spread their, spread their message across the world, no matter how small your world is. And that's a personal reason for me. What do you think that verse in the Quran, what's your take on that verse? Well, um, that's not the only verse in the Quran that uh, the Prophet is asking us of what he wants from us. There's another verse in the Quran which says, قُلْ مَا سَأَلْتَكُمْ مِنْ أَجْرٍ فَهُوَ لَكُمْ which means, uh, which means tell them that whatever I ask you is for your own benefit, is for, you, for your sake. So having that verse and having the verse that you just mentioned, which is, um, I don't ask you for anything other than to love Ahl uh, like my family, the Wil Qurba. Putting them together, we just realize that loving them and um, loving them is just for our own benefit. It's something that we benefit from. And uh, as we mentioned in the discussion today with Sister Ruya and with yourself, uh, all these commemorations and all of this uh, remembering is just honestly teaching us lessons to make us better people in this world and hopefully we will be in a better place in the next world. So it's all stuff that we can learn lessons from. And by just loving someone, you automatically just want to follow in their footsteps. You want to be like them. You want to learn from them. You want to, like, we see it like youth these days. By just loving some, I don't know, some... Celebrity. Celebrity, yeah. yeah. They, just, they just want to be like them. They even dress like them. They even talk like them. They start believing in that celebrity, whatever they think. So I think having a bigger role model that is like, it's black and white. He's, he's the haq, he's the total, he's an infallible, he's right. And loving that person and making that person as my role model, I'm benefiting. I'm the main, main, main beneficiary here and no one else really. So by just following, so I think that uh, this ayah you mentioned is an extremely, extremely important thing to remember that loving this person can have a life affecting. So wrapping up, commemorating Ashura benefits us. But we're not the only people who have that ideology, are we? Um, absolutely not. One of um, the biggest events that, that happened um, last century was um, the Holocaust. Now every single year um, we are reminded Everyone, the whole world is reminded of the Holocaust. Every little thing that happens, um, uh, or every opportunity uh, they get, they, um, they bring in the issue of the Holocaust. And, um, and it's something that um, is done just simply um, for society to... Um, not forget what happened to the Jews, but also the fact that it never happens again. Because it was such um, a major um, crime that happened, a whole, um, whether it was two million or three million um, people 
um, of a certain faith were, were wiped out. Um, obviously, this obviously Jews don't want this to happen again. So every year, not even every year, every single opportunity they get. Sometimes, even if someone d disagrees with it, again, yeah. it's it, whether it starts. it's yeah, whether it's to do with um, the issue or not, it's it's brought up. So I believe that we should as well um, do the same thing because um, for us it was almost as though a whole belief system, if Ashura hadn't happened, a whole belief system, a whole religion would have been completely wiped out. The family of the Prophet um, as a whole. As a whole, the family of the Prophet as a whole um, was wiped out. I mean, um, he only had 72 members of his family, and from that 72 members, just a handful of women and children survived. So it was a whole lineage um, was being wiped out. And we need to um, commemorate this every year to sh to, to, so that we make sure that this doesn't happen. We make sure that uh, a particular sect or a particular religion is not targeted, even though no matter how much um, uh, they want to, um, wipe or make the name of Islam bad. We need to stand up for our rights and our beliefs. Thank you so much, Sister Roya and Sister Absolutely. Maryam, for being here today with me. I've learned a lot from the both of you and from the very wide range of examples that you have given me. And thank you for joining us today for another episode of Karbala Reflections. Today's talk about commemorating Ashura, the importance it holds, the benefits it has for ourselves and the, and the community, and the emphasis we have put as to the new things that we can learn every year has been beneficial, and may the memory of Ashura forever live on. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.